Hey Bison, are you ready to have some fun today? Our first activity is going to require your listening ears. So turn them on, listen closely, and get ready to count. We are going to do some sound counting to start today. Ready? Did I drop in this can? Were you listening? Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did you get eight? <laughs> if you did, great job listening. What was it that we dropped into this can to make it rattle? Do you know what these are? Yes, they're coins. They're money. And we're going to learn about them today and play with them today and make some fun things with the coins you have. Maybe you have them in your piggy bank at home. Get them out because we're going to use them to play today. First, let's learn the name of each coin. All right, let's learn the names of each of these coins and what they're worth. All right, grab the first one. The first one that's a different color than the rest. The rest are silver, but this one is kind of a shiny reddish brown. Hmm, this is the penny. Penny, penny, easily spent. Copper, brown, and worth one cent. Grab the next one. Nickel, nickel, thick and fat. You're worth five cents. I know that. Nickel, five. The smallest coin. Dime, dime, little and thin. I remember you're worth ten. The dime is worth 10. And the last coin, quarter, quarter, big and bold. You're worth 25, I'm told. So those are some great little rhymes we can use to remember how much each coin is worth. The penny is worth one. The nickel is worth five cents. The dime is worth 10 cents. And the quarter is worth 25 cents. But there's something really neat about quarters. They have our very first president on them, George Washington. And on the back, they have a really cool eagle. But the United States Treasury, the people that make the money for all of the United States did something really special with quarters. They gave every state their own neat design on the back. Here's one from Oklahoma. It has a hummingbird on it. Or swallowtail bird. Here is one from Iowa. It has a little house. Here is one from Yellowstone in Wyoming. It has one of my favorite animals, a bison on it. I wonder if you can look through your quarters and see the different pictures. 
pictures on the back. Hmm. We're going to use these quarters and these nickels, pennies, and dimes to make our very own puzzle next. So get out a piece of paper, grab some crayons, and get a nice pen or pencil to do some tracing. And let's go! to make our very own coin puzzles today and you can make them two ways. One way will make them as a rubbing where you have to match the picture with the rubbing you see. The other way will trace around the outside the circumference of the circle and we will match the sizes on our puzzle sheet. So come with me and look down here and we will begin. I'm going to start with the rubbings first. I'm going to put the coin under the paper. Hold the paper down tight and grab my crayon. I'm going to go over the top of the coin with my crayon. Can you see the circle it made? I'm using the edge of the crayon and rubbing back and forth, back and forth. Let me put some other coins underneath and give it a go. Rubbing back and forth where the coin is, back and forth, back and forth. I'm holding the paper steady because the coin can slide around on me. If the coin is sliding around, it looks more like a blob than it does a circle. So put your fingers on both sides of the coin. One here and one here. And that will hold the coin down while you color. Rubbing back and forth, back, back and forth, rubbing back and forth, back, back and forth. Do you see? I've got a little blue and a big orange. Now I could also make a puzzle by tracing. So let me set some coins around on my paper and grab my pen. I'm going to take one finger and hold the center of the coin. Hold my pin down low and trace around the outside. Move it. Hold it. Trace around the outside. Move it. Can you see the circles I have left? There we go. We're tracing these coins to make our own puzzle. Now the puzzle part. Can we match these coins with our rubbings or our circles? I'll show you how. Let's see. I'm going to pick up this little dime. Is that where it goes? The circle is too big. Too big. Still too big. The rubbing is too big. Oh, just right. Let me try another. Too big. Hmm. No. Too big. Oh, just right. Let me see. Oh, that covers up the rubbing altogether. That's too big. Can I find the, oh, just right where it goes and finish my puzzle. Let's sort these coins. Let's use our brain and our skills to sort out these coins. There are four different types of coins. The penny, the nickel, the dime, and the quarter. So we're going to get out a piece of paper and divide it into four. Let's fold to divide. Get out your pinching L's. Make the corners touch. Push down. Twist it. Make the corners touch. Push down. 
Now let's unfold. When I unfold, I have divided my paper into fourths. One rectangle, two rectangles, three rectangles, four rectangles, fourths. And I'm going to use this to sort my coins. When I sort, I have to make up a rule. The rule can change, but I have to make up a rule to sort out my objects. I could sort by color with these. Silver, silver, silver. Silver, silver, silver. Copper, 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 silver. Silver, copper, copper, copper. I could add another rule. Color, silver, copper. I could sort those again by whether they're dirty or clean. Silver will go on this side. Copper will go on this side. Clean silver, dirty silver. Dirty silver. Clean silver, clean silver, clean copper, dirty copper, dirty copper, dirty copper, clean copper, clean copper, dirty copper. I could put them together, all the dirty coins, all the clean coins. There are many ways to sort. Let's try another rule. Let's do Small, bigger, bigger, biggest. Small dimes. I will put the small dimes. They have the smallest circumference around. They are the smallest diameter wide. How far across they are. Smallest. Medium. Medium. Bigger, the nickels are bigger than the pennies. Bigger, they're bigger than the dimes. Bigger nickels. Biggest, quarters are the biggest. Bigger than a nickel, bigger than a penny, bigger than a dime. Biggest. Well, there are lots of ways I can sort these coins. It's up to me to make up a rule. Next, we're going to do a little science experiment with these coins. We are going to see how many drops of water we can balance on the surface of a coin without them spilling over the edge. You'll notice the water will pile up on the coin in an arch shape, a dome shape, and it will stay there unless we add too much water. So let's see how many drops each coin can hold. When it reaches their max, there's a science word for that. So we'll talk about it when we get there. Let's give it a try. I've got my penny, my nickel, my dime, and my quarter lined up for this test. I've got my water. I'm going to use my pinching L, put the tip under the water, pinch, and let go. Now I have water loaded in here. I'm going to start with the quarter. And I'm going to do one drop and balance it on there. Two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how carefully I'm adding the drops? Just one little bit at a time. If I squeeze like this, all the water comes out and then we can't count how many drops the coin can hold. I was at six. The number after six is 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And do you see how the water is a big bubble on top? It hasn't spilled off. The surface, the coin is holding the water in surface tension. Tension, holding it tight, and it won't let it slip off. We fit 30 drops on the quarter. If I keep going, what do you think will happen? Let's see. The bubble gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It hasn't spilled yet. Until finally we add, oh, too much and it spills over. Let's try the surface tension on one more coin. Let's try the dime. Will, do you think it will be more or less than the quarter? Hmm, let's test and find out. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I have balanced seventeen drops on here. Let me see if you can see how it's bubbled up so nicely. The surface of the dime is holding the curved bubble of water in surface tension. How many drops can you get to balance on a coin? Which coin will hold the most, the least? Can you experiment adding extra drips to the very edge right before you add one too many and it spills off? Have fun using your pinching L's and your science and math brain to balance water droplets on the surface, the top, the surface of the coins, holding that water in a big surface tension bubble. <laughs> thing we'll do is learn the symbols for money. Now, a symbol is kind of like a letter, a special letter that means either a dollar, like a green dollar bill, or a cent, a cent, like what coins are measured in. One cent for the penny, five cents for the nickel, 10 cents for the dime. 25 cents for the quarter. Four quarters to make up one dollar. So let's learn the symbols that we use to represent money. The symbol for the dollar is a fun one to make. It is an S the letter S, and we know how to make the S. Make a magic C, stop, turn the other way. A nice big S. Then we add a big line down, so frog jump to the top and draw a big line down. Frog jump next to it, right here, and draw another big line down. That is the symbol for dollar. Then the symbol for cents is a C. So where do you start your letters at the top? Big curve. And frog jump, a big line down through. This means dollar. This means cent. One penny is a cent. You might have fun lining the coins up on these lines and practicing the symbols for dollar and 
scent today. Have fun playing with money from your piggy banks. Have a good day, Bison.